Let's talk about a Blendiv option in Photoshop. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another really fun episode. Today I will explain you what a Blendiv is and how to use it in Photoshop. And Blendiv, it's so powerful tool in Photoshop, but unfortunately it's not so often used. And I really hope that after this tutorial, you will start to use it much often. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's the fun begin. All right, guys, today we will use a few different images, but we will start with this one. And first thing what I like to do is to explain you the basic principles of Blend Diff, how to use it in general. And later when you figure it out, you can apply it on any image that you want. So first I will create a new empty layer and I will name it Gradient, like so. And I will use black and white colors here, go to a gradient and choose the first one, foreground to background, press OK, press and hold shift and just drag from the start to the end of the frame here and I will create really nice new gradient. All right, the next step is to go to Blend If options. How to do that? Well, basically we have two ways. First, it's to go to layer here, then layer style, blending options. And the second one, which I prefer, it's just to double click on a layer and we have this layer style dialog box with a lot of different layer styles here, but we will deal only here with the Blend If option, all right? Here, uh, you have just blending modes, the same you have here. If you change it maybe to multiply, it will change to multiply right here and so on and so on. The opacity and fill slider, same as you have here and few different options that we will not cover today. Today we will only concentrate on this portion here where it says blend if, right? And we have some drop down menu where you can see we have gray, red, green and blue options. Uh, grades basically stand for luminosity, red, green and blue are basically like red, green and blue channels in Photoshop. We will deal with those three a little bit later. Let's start with the gray, All right? That means that we are dealing with the luminosity only. And we have two gradient bars with some sliders here and both of them are representing the luminosity spectrum of a certain layers. The first one represents the luminosity spectrum of this layer, it, it, it says this layer, that means the layer that it selected, the gradient layer. And the second one, it says underlying layer and represent the luminosity spectrum of the layer that it's underneath of the currently selected layer or luminosity spectrum of everything that it's visible on the screen when you turn off the first layer, in this case, the gradient layer, right? Let's start with the first option here where it says this layer. First, let's reposition this a little bit like so and make this a little bit smaller just to have everything visible in the screen. That's nice. And let's start with the first layer. Now the first layer, it's completely visible in whole luminosity spectrum. If we move, for example, the black slider a little bit to the right, we will cut off some parts of the blacks and that layer will not be visible in the black part of the spectrum, in the darkest tone of the spectrum. Let me show you. If I move this a little bit to the right, you will see that I will clip some blacks here, some shadows here from an image. And if I move this brighter slider to the left, I will clip some highlights. And that's really straightforward how this slider works. It will clip some shadows, it will clip some highlights. And we have another option really handy here when you press and hold Alt or Option key and move this slider, you will separate uh, this slider in a two sliders and you will have really nice feather effect, really nice transition between uh, those all completely dark stones to a little bit brighter. And then you can play with that because sometimes you don't want so harsh transition like it is now. So it's same with the bright slider, you will press Alt Option key and just move it and you will have really nice transition, right? Let's reset it and let's go to a next slider here. The second option, it's just a little bit more complicated, but we will figure it out together. As you can see here, we basically have a two different layers, the gradient layer and the table layer. And the table layer now it's completely covered, completely affected by this gradient layer in a whole spectrum range from completely dark to completely bright tones. And that's the reason why we cannot see the table layer because it's completely affected by this gradient layer. But what happens if we move some sliders, if we narrow that luminosity spectrum? Let me show you that. If I move, for example, this left slider a little bit to the right, 
it will start to show some parts of underlying layer. It will start to show the darkest part of underlying layer. Why? Because now the underlying layer is still affected by a gradient layer, but only in between those two sliders. The darkest parts of underlying layer are not affected by a gradient layer, and that's why we can see them, right? If we move this slider a little bit to the left, the highlight, we will now start to see the highlights because now highlights are not affected by a gradient layer. The gradient layer affects only parts of uh, luminosity spectrum in between those two sliders. In other words, we are protecting the shadows by moving this slider and we are protecting the highlights by moving this slider. And of course, we can press Alter Option key and separate that to have a little bit nicer and smoother transition and we will have a result like this. Only now, only some mid-tones, as you can see here, are affected or covered by the gradient layer, the top layer, right? I hope that you understand now a little bit better what this second slider uh, are, is doing, right? And let's cancel this and let me show you on the next example. For example, let's use the elevator image and the winter image here. And if I double click on winter image, again, we have the same option here. And the first slider, it's affecting the current layer, this layer, and it's straightforward. If I move this to the right, I will only clip the darkest part, the shadows and a little bit brighter parts of the winter layer. And if I go with this slider to the left, I will clip the brightest part, snow here and snow on the tree. And that will not be visible, right? Because now everything that is in between those two sliders stay visible, everything else is disappeared, right? And that's really straightforward. But what happens with this second slider? If I move this slider to the right, like so, the shadow parts of the underlying layer starts to become visible because the winter layer, it's not affecting them. The winter layer now affects only in between those two sliders, only parts that are in between those two sliders. So I move this a little bit to the left, only the darkest parts of the elevator layer shows through. So I'm protecting the shadows and now I'm protecting the highlights. So highlights are seen through this layer because this layer, it's not affecting the highlights. And that's so easy. We can just, again, press Alter Option key and just feather this transition and we will have really nice effect. All right, I hope that now you have a little bit better understanding how the blend if sliders works. Now let me show you how that red, green and blue options are affecting the image. All right, let's reveal the color spectrum layer here. We have this color wheel and let's double click on it to go to blend if options. Let's go from gray to red, for example, and we have some black to red gradient bars with the sliders. If I move this slider a little bit to the left, everything that contains red pigment in it will start to clip, will start to disappear. And what happens if I move this slider where it's black color, it will not clip the black parts. It will actually clip the opposite color in a spectrum wheel, in this case, cyan, right? It will clip everything that contains cyan in it. So this is red, this is cyan. If I go to green, this is green, right? Everything that contains green tint and opposite of green, it's magenta. So it will clip magenta and the same it's with blue. It's blue and opposite it's yellow. So it will clip blue and yellow. And that's basically how those sliders works. For example, if I go back here to a gradient and a table, and if I click to a gradient and go to red and go down below to this layer, it will start to show only the red parts of underlying layer, everything that contains a red tint or here, everything that contains a cyan tint because cyan is opposite of a red. And that's, that's the whole procedure. Right guys, I really hope that now you have a little bit better understanding how to use the blend if, and now let me show you some real world examples, right? Let's go to this uh, table layer. Let's make it bigger and let's type some text here. Let's type maybe holiday. Why not? and press OK. I will move this text, reposition it somewhere here. And I want to achieve the effect that this text, it's painted with a brush and the paint on the table, not like uh, it is now just pasted on the table. When you use a brush and paint on the table because of the table imperfections, you will see some parts of the table through the text. 
and we can achieve that maybe by lowering the opacity, mm, but it's not even close. I can change the blending mode from normal to overlay. It's not bad, but it's not good a color. I can change the soft light and maybe duplicate a few times. Now it's a little bit better, but this is not even close to what I want to achieve. So let's undo a few times. And here it's where the blend if options comes really, really handy. So let's double click on this layer and let's zoom it a little bit like so. And let's go to blend if. What I like to do here is I want some parts of the table, actually the darkest part of the table to be visible through the text. Or in other words, I don't want the text to affect the darkest parts of the table. So I will go to underlying layer because the table is underlying layer and I want to protect the shadow. So let's move this to the right and then press alter option key and just feather it a little bit. And as you can see, this is really, really nice. Like I painted with, with some brush and I have those really nice imperfections. The beauty of this is that if I press OK, I can move this text, reposition it and the effect will stay right here. It's like, as you can see, I painted with a brush, but I see those holes in the table because the paint didn't cover those holes. That's really, really nice. And again, I can always double click on the layer and reposition and change something here, how much this will affect the background and so on. And that's really, really nice. Let's press OK and let me show you another really great trick here. If I create a new layer and use a white brush, all right, let's make it a little bit bigger and just paint over those branches here, okay, like so. And let's paint here, why not? Like so. We don't need to be precise at all. Just paint it like this, okay. And now if we go to Blend If, double click on that and move, protect the shadows here. Watch what happens. We made a snow on those branches because we protected the shadows so that white color, it's not affecting the shadows. And now we have impression that those branches are covered with the snow. It's really nice and easy effect to achieve. Right, let me show you another example. Let's go, let's close this and go to a book image here. For example, you want to colorize this image, but you want to make it a little bit cooler, but you want to make only shadows a little bit cooler. We can do that really easy with the blend if. Just create a curves adjustment layer and let's go to blues. Let's make this a little bit more cooler. Let's reduce the red or add the cyan. And now we have really nice and beautiful, cool shadows. But as you can see, the whole image, it's a lot cooler and I don't want that. I want only shadows to be cooled down. So double click on the curves and we have this uh, blend if option. So I want to protect the highlights in this case of underlying layer. So let's move this slider to the left and you can see the highlights started to uh, disappear or this uh, curves adjustment layer will not affect the highlights. And then I will make this effect feathered a little bit and make something like so as you can see if i press ok before and after before and after only highlight only shadows are covered with that blue color so we can do the opposite you can use curves and make things a little bit more warmer like so by adding a red and yellow right and i want to make only highlights warmer so i want to protect the shadows right and let's move this all the way here and then feather it a little bit and as you can see I only made the highlights warmer and that's really nice, nice and fast way how to colorize your image. So let me show you another example. For example, I want to sharpen this image and I want to merge everything together with shift Control alt e or shift command option e on a Mac. Let's make a new layer and I want to sharpen it so I will go to filter other high pass and let's zoom it to see the details here. It's too much, around 1 or 1.2 maybe, just for this example. And then I will change blending mode from a normal to a linear light. As you can see here, this image is a lot sharper, maybe 
a lot more than it's supposed to be, but for this example, it's it's great. And for example, I want this sharpening, sharpening effect to be applied only on the highlight. So let's go double click on it and let's go to blend if option. So I want to preserve the shadows. What we need to do? That's right. Preserve the shadows right here. Go to underlying layer and move this to the right. And you can see how it starts to preserve the shadow so that this layer, in this case, sharpening layer will not affect shadows because we are preserving the shadow. It will affect only the spectrum between those two sliders. All right. And maybe we want to, maybe we want to feather this transition a little bit. And if I press OK, zoom it a little bit before and after only highlights are affected. And here, as you can see, only highlights are affected. Shadows are not affected. And that's a great way to sharpen your, your image. It's the same if you want to reduce the noise from an image. Maybe you want to have noise in the highlights, but not in the shadows. And opposite depends of uh, your preference. The blend if it's perfect and fastest way to do that. All right, guys, that's it for today. I really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learned something new from today's episode. As you saw before, the blend if it's really powerful tool in Photoshop and you can use it in a lot of different situations. Just practice, experiment, get used to use it. And I really hope after this tutorial, you will start to use it more often. If you have any questions at all regarding to this episode, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. If you'd like to support me to create even more interesting tutorials for you guys, you can check my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. So have fun experiment and see you in the next fun tutorial. Bye bye.